everyone okay so this video now is looking at the module 2 geometry creation and modeling for answers design modeler uh, these two workshops 2.1 2.2 are really key the first one is sketching and the second one is modeling so let's start off with the sketching uh, one first and the next video uh, depending how long this will take could be modeling so sketching one is simply what we're going to do is we're going to use answers design modeler so what we want to do is grab and drop in a geometry and then right click on geometry and click on new design modeler and the first thing we want to do is make sure that our units um, are correct um, according to the workshop so the workshop says it's in inches so let's get that ready um, once that's ready now we then look at the xy plane i always like to press look at um, it's the same as clicking on this here um, and it brings you into your view and what we're going to do is we're going to be um, creating a new sketch so sketch one click on sketching and our sketching tool um, and the draw are all ready for us and what we want to do is we want to create a circle but not at the point we're going to create it on the constraint on the y-axis so anywhere doesn't really matter until you see the C drag and drop and draw your first circle and you can see that it's you know it's constrained to the actual axis as well and let's give it a dimension uh, that's going to be 10 inches okay and what we want to do now is we want to give it a dimension from the center point to the x-axis so vertical point to there and then just drag and drop that there and that one's going to be 12. Let's see if we can put that away and you can see that circles here and it's 12 inches away from the x-axis and it has a diameter of 10 inches. So the next thing now is to draw a rectangular box section from here going all the way down and the key thing here is again to look out for the C. So I go back to draw, rectangle, see a C there, and just drop a box here, and that's fine. So it looks it's constrained at one point to this arc here, which is what we need. Um, and there is also a tool um, on our con um, constraints. So we can go to the constraints coincidence, and we can say that that point to this edge and it automatically constrains that there for us so what we want to do now is we want to put in a chamfer um, and that's in the modify tool so we've got a chamfer here and the chamfer we put the dimensions in first so 2.5 and it's going to be this edge against this edge and we've got a 2.5 chamfer so once we've got our chamfer uh, we can use a trim tool to get away with some of the key uh, parts that we don't need. So trim, um, and it's this one here, this one here, this one here, and this one here. And so we have this shape that's needed towards the end. So um, you can also use the ignore axis um, tool here which basically when I clicked on that one first it joined to the axis if you click on that it just gets rid of everything that's not affected by the axis so what we want to do now is we want to use uh, the symmetry tool to make sure that from here to here and from here to here are equally um, constrained so constraints symmetry select the axis first so it goes yellow and then select the point and then the next point and that's done and now we just press escape to get rid of that function so what we're going to do is we want to now use the modify tool section and use the drag um, and we just want to just just to show that what we can do uh, with the drag so for example if I dragged this point here you can see it moves it in and out um, but it keeps it nice and symmetrical and everything's fully constrained okay so um, now what we want to do is we want to give it some dimensions so the first dimension we're going to give is the left hand side so again here um, I would use the general 
So drag that out, give it six inches. So that's six inches there. And the next section that we want to do is give the bottom um, five inches. So we'll give that five inches. So that's done there. And the next thing is we want to give it a height from the actual X axis. So again, here you can use the general tool. So if I select that and that, it will then give me a height. And that height is going to be three inches. So you can see that everything's slightly just adjusting and moving by themselves. Now what we want to do is we want to use the angle. Um, and the angle that we want to use is 135. Now this is a little bit tricky. So once you select the angle tool and select this edge and this edge, you'll see that it's giving me this angle first. Now if I right click on the mouse, I can find alternative angle until I find the one that's needed, which is this one here. So once I select that, I can put in the value of 135. And now that's constrained. So now what we need to do is we need to split the edge. So splitting the edge is basically splitting this circular edge on the top um, into two edges. So modify, split. Now, once we click on split, you can right click on the split and go to edge at selection, edges at points, or what we want to do is we want to select the equal segments. And um, two segments equal, click on that and you can see there's a point there. Don't worry that it's gone green. That's not a that's not a problem. That's just because of the dimensions overlaying the sketch. So once all of this has been done, we can now move on to the 3D uh, section. Um, so modeling, um, click on the modeling tool here. And then what we want to do is we want to click on sketch one and we want to select the revolve function. So once we select the revolve, you can see the geometry here is that one. And the axis here now is going to be the Z axis because it needs to revolve along that axis. So what we want to do is we want to make sure um, that we select sorry, this axis here because it's going to revolve um, um, around that axis there. And you can press apply, it says 360, generate, and you can see that it's created our uh, wheel section for our pulley. So the next section now in the actual uh, workshop is to apply a different sketch. Um, it's the next step that goes through this section and around and above. So it's very important that the next sketch is done um, on sketch two. Um, so what we want to do is here, we're going to basically look at the sketching and look at the YZ plane. So select the YZ, look at, we can see it here, draw a new sketch, sketching, circle, find P, the point, drop out, and then give it a dimension. And that dimension is going to be five inches. Okay, so it's ever so slightly smaller than this bit. So once we've done that now, is then we need to create um, the third sketch, which is going to be the path that this circle follows around our sketch. So again, here, what we want to do is look at the modeling, go to X, Y, look at, draw a new sketch, so sketch three. And in here, what we're going to do is we're going to use the offset modify tool uh, section. So go to sketching, modify, offset. And sometimes, depending on your screen, you might need to use the, um, the button down here to find um, your key components. So what we're going to do here is we want to select uh, the top edge and press control on the keyboard to multi-select. And now we've selected. So we've got three edges selected. Um, once the three um, edges have been selected, you then have to right click and then select end selection of place offset. And then 
depending on where you want to bring it and we just want to bring it round about here and then um, right click and oh, sorry do that again um, so offset click 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 right click and selection come out here click on the screen right click and so it's done our offset for us so once we've done that what we want to do is we want to trim and make this time make sure that here when we trim this we don't have the ignore axis we want to uh, use the axis to trim it up to uh, which is very important once we've done that then what we need to do is we need to uh, put a form of constraint um, and make sure that it's uh, this edge um, is constrained to the actual x-axis so select the x-axis off um, sketch and then we should be able to uh, constrain uh, those so constrain and what we'll do is use the coincidence tool like previously click that and then that and then you can see now it's fully constrained to that axis so hopefully now what we can do is we can just carry on with this sketch to draw a line from the top so draw a line zoom out a little bit use the p to click that point and you can see the v come up make sure it says vertical and just drop a line there and what we want to do now is obviously that's going up to a certain point and that's going to be 13 inches so give it a dimension general 13 inches so we have all of that ready now what we want to do is we want to make sure that we use the sweep function so this time to use the sweep we need to use the tool section up here so we've got sweep and what we're going to do is the profile is sketch 2 and the path is sketch 3 apply generate and there you go so it's basically a sweep that profile the circle which was at sketch 2 along the path of sketch 3 so now what we need to do is finally just draw the circular cylinder on top so the best way to do this is make sure that the face tool is selected click on the face tool select the face and then switch to the um, modeling um, so we can draw a circle so we can go straight to sketching on there and you can see it has automatically selected that draw a point maybe zoom in a little bit around there and then we want to give it a dimension of 10 inches okay and you can see that that's done and now what we're going to do is we want to extrude that last sketch so again extrude and you can see it here automatically giving you a visual and we want to do a depth of 15 and press generate and there you go so now you have your final model um, which is the pulley system and that's all done from simply using the sketching tool function Okay, so the next video is going to be uh, using the modeling um, uh, function in ANSYS, so it's a little bit longer, so it'll be a, a different video.